Hey everyone, my name is Drew Brashler and I received this question from John recently and I thought that it might help some of you out there. It reads, hey Drew, I have the latest firmware file downloaded for our X32 and I'm scared to update it, okay? I think it is now version three. Besides backing up scenes and snippets, what happens when you update the board? I've heard the routing changes, etc. Do I lose my library? I'm not sure how to back up my library. Now, John brings up a really good question here, and honestly, we should be thinking about this same type of question with any piece of gear. It doesn't matter if it's the X32, the M32, a lighting console, a different audio console. Really, we should update nothing without backing it up. And this brings me to a little bit of a soapbox moment. USB drives are very cheap. It's very easy to have multiple of these and it doesn't take us very long to back up things to a USB drive. So no matter if you're backing up your console for a firmware update, or if you're just mixing, you should always be saving your show data. If say your building gets struck by lightning and all of a sudden takes out this X32, and you put in another X32 that maybe you have from a different room, what happens to all your information that you had in your show file? It could take hours to actually try and replicate what you had and then maybe you accidentally forget that you had that one plugin on that one pastor and then it goes up and sounds completely different. It's very easy to just buy a USB drive, stick it in the top and back it up. So that is the end of my soapbox. Next soapbox, here it comes. Don't update anything if you are a day within your show. Don't do it. If you're a church, do not update on Friday. Do not update on Saturday. Do not update on Sunday morning. This is the days that you do not want to update. You always want to update, say, on a Monday or a Tuesday to give you ample amount of time to figure out if you accidentally broke something. So any piece of gear, never update on show day. Always give yourself at least a day or two advance before your actual show date to update things. End of soapbox number two. All right, let's actually dive into this and figure out how to do this type of stuff. Now, one thing that he brings up is a question about what happens when I update. Am I going to have different things happening to my console from this update to this update? Something that Behringer does that's actually very beneficial is they put out a change log with every firmware update. So if you go download the Behringer update from Behringer's website, unzip that file, there will be a change log in there. And you can actually go and read that and it will list out all the new updates in that firmware release, which is actually a really cool thing of being able to go find out if there's something new that might be beneficial to you and your mix. So make sure to go check those out whenever you update your firmware. Now let's go ahead and actually dive into backing up our console. Now, in one of the more recent updates, Behringer released the ability to back up our console with the click of one button. And I'm going to show you that first. So all you have to do is go click the setup button, tab over to our global, and then we take a USB drive, any USB drive, and we can stick it in the top. Now we can see this access light is going on. If the access light is on, that means the information is either being read or written to that USB drive. So do not unplug this USB drive if that little access light is lit. If you do happen to unplug it during that time, you might either corrupt the data or completely lose the data. So just be careful with that. The next thing that we need to do is we need to take our third rotary knob and we're gonna rotate this down to export. Once we do that, we can click export and it's going to go through and save all of the things. So we have our channel presets, our effects presets, the actual configuration of the board, including what the sample rate is, the IP address. This is a great way of backing up the entire console as is right now. Now at the very end, it's going to display that we backed up this console and it's gonna list the date and the time. So it says that it's 12.02 right now and it's April the 1st. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. Once that's done, you can simply press yes and the screen will disappear. 
So we have now successfully backed up our entire console. Everything on our console, including scenes, snippets, libraries, everything is now backed up to this one USB drive, which we could take, plug into a computer and view all that information. We can also restore our console via that same file. Now, what if you happen to be on one of the earlier versions of firmware that does not include this really cool backup feature? Well, it's a little bit time consuming, but I can show you right now. So we're first going to press view on scenes, and then we're gonna go over to our queues. Our queues is going to be our main section that we can actually back up our show from. This will include all of your scenes and snippets and queues when we back this up. So we go ahead and press utility, and we're going to press export show. The next thing that we are going to want to do is we'll want to create a file of where we're actually going to save. So we're going to scroll and we're going to create a folder or you can select a folder from that same screen. So I'm gonna title this x32 and create folder. Now, once I've created the folder, I'll actually have to go back in to actually export them. So I'm gonna press utility again and I'm going to press export show. I'm going to navigate down to the folder that I just created called X32, and I'm going to select, and then I'm going to press export. I can title it, I'm going to leave it as my show, and we press save. So it's going to now go through all of my scenes and all of my snippets and all of my cues and export them one by one to this backup. Now, one downside of doing it this way is the scenes will not be named. They will just be numbered. So if we go over to our scenes, I'll see that I have these numbers here next to all of my scenes. And these will import back into these same spots if I do import them. But say I wanted to export a certain scene and have just maybe five of them backed up, but I don't need all 100 of them backed up. I can actually go to my scenes tab, I can press utility, and I can export multiple scenes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select multiple scenes. So I'm going to select one, two, three, four, five, and six. But all the rest of them I don't actually want to export. So I'm then going to press export scenes, and I'm going to navigate to where I want to save them to, and I'm going to save them here. And now we will see that we are exporting those five scenes, and they will be labeled according to this first name that they are titled here. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to go back up our library data. So go ahead and tab over to library, and we're going to go over to our channel presets here. So this is my channel preset library, and we can see that I have my DBB audio stuff here. I actually have a couple presets for the channels and effects that I do sell on my website, and it helps me create videos like the one that you're seeing today and keeping this content completely for free. So if you want to go ahead and help me out, feel free to take a look at those. And if you see one that you might like, go ahead and purchase it. Thank you so much for supporting me in this channel, by the way. So let's go ahead and export these. I'm going to press utility, and I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to export. I'm going to navigate to my X32 folder, and I'm going to press select and export. Now, this is now saving all of my channel presets here. We can see the access light is on, so I would not want to unplug this. So now that we can see that this is empty here and the access light is off, we can tab over to our effects section and we can press utility, select all, and export. Navigate to our X32 file and export. Now that our effects section is done, we can tab over to our routing section. We can also export these by pressing utility, selecting all, export, navigating to our X32 pay folder, and export. Now the very last tab over here, AES50, we would actually have to export these one at a time. So we can press utility and then we can see that our presets are right here. So I'm going to export these one at a time because I can't actually select all of them. So export and navigate to my X32 and save. Go back, select here, export, X32 and save. Again, 12 mono, export, save. 
Now that we have our Behringer X32 backed up with all of our libraries saved and scenes saved and everything, it is safe for me to go ahead and update this on a day that's not my show. Again, that soapbox is pretty important. But it does bring up an interesting question. What kind of things can we run into with updating our console? I have heard of people's libraries being erased and needing to reload their libraries on their X32 when they've updated their firmwares. One thing that actually happened to me uh, when I was moving from a version 1 to a version 2 software on this console was the mix buses added a tap so that they could be pre-fader or post-fader. And I then did not have control over my volume levels to my PA. So it ended up that I was doing a little bit of gain shading on my PA via my matrices. And then I updated my console and my PA was all of a sudden 10 dB louder because I was controlling the volume of my PA with that matrix. And so some of these things, unfortunately, I can't tell you are going to happen or if they aren't going to happen. Uh, it's just going to be depending on your console and what firmware you're coming from and to, which is, again, why you need to just make sure that you save everything and give yourself enough time to go through your console file to make sure that everything works the way that it should. And additionally, make sure to check that change log and see those updated features that they have and check each one of them to see if they're functioning the way that they should. So John, thanks so much for this question. And if any of you guys have any questions that you think that I might be able to answer for you, please put them in the comments below. I'm always looking for questions to answer to help you guys. Thanks so much.